In 2006, Time Magazine named you the person of the year. When I saw this cover, I was 17 years old. Since then, I've become a creative and learned how to share what I create on the web. This model of personal empowerment and content generation that was new in 2006 has since become the norm. Case in point, Malcolm Moore's thrift shop. He recently became the first independent artist to reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Partially due to the billboard beginning to tally YouTube views into their calculations, but also because the independent artists now have all the same tools available to use that the major labels do. This is a photo of the home studio that I share with my roommate and electronic music producer Shane Johnson, aka Anamano. In the past two years, we have produced two albums here, and using websites like SoundCloud and Bandcamp, we can share our work with the world for free on the same platforms that the professionals use. Publication has also recognized this new model. In 2012, the Amazon UK announced that it had sold more copies of Fifty Shades of Grey than it had the entire Harry Potter series combined. The book got its start when James released it on a self-publishing website. From there, it spread by word of mouth and became wildly popular. As a graphic designer today, I have control over every step of the design process. I, uh, it wasn't very long ago when designs were created by hand and it took teams of people working on a graphic to make it happen and come alive. Now all of those steps are consolidated into software. With the help of a few tutorials, we can all be designers today. But that doesn't mean that we should. <laughs> the increase in access to tools has also increased the amount of marginal and downright terrible work out there. Have you ever seen how many cat videos there are on the internet? It's scary and wrong. We all have this incredible power to create, so how do we use it successfully and efficiently? For me, the answer came through the Occupy movement. The leaderless, non-hierarchical structure that developed within Occupy is one that I've applied to every aspect of my work. I welcome all collaboration, whether it be in music, design, or activism. I believe that in most projects, the more people you can involve, the stronger your result will be. I started Theory Magazine a little more than a year ago as my senior thesis project at MSU. I combined my love for art and design by creating a local art magazine. The idea was to use the skills that I possess to create an open channel for artists to share their own work and ideas. The biggest critique I had during the thesis review process was essentially that print is dead. I disagree with that statement, but I also fully acknowledge the power of the internet. My efforts in creating Theory Magazine reflect that. We've divided 50, our focus 50-50 between our web presence and our print production. With the help of my partner, Ashley Moon, we gathered together artists and creatives in Bozeman to be featured in our first issue. I interviewed them and gathered images of their work, and we printed 100 copies of the first issue to sell. By charging for the physical objects, we ensured that our readers actually cared to read the magazine and that it wouldn't end up in the trash. To celebrate the launch of our first issue, we organized a group art show and party at the Cottonwood Club, a free DIY or do-it-yourself art venue. This model of creating an event around the magazine has become very important. It allows the art community of Bozeman to interact and network with each other in person. After the launch of issue one, we put all the content from the magazine up on the website, then shared each feature on Facebook. The power of social media revealed itself, and we watched the traffic on the site climb. I was amazed by the amount of international traffic, as well as submissions that started coming in from all over the globe. Issue two was launched in October of 2012. We kept the same format, but after completely selling out of issue one, we upped the print run to 250. The small network that we initially had expanded by word of mouth. We arranged a whole new lineup of featured artists. The issue had five different cover editions to choose from. The launch party for issue two was held at The Loft on Main Street. Once again, we organized a group art show with the featured artists. The magazine was on display to read alongside of the actual art that was on its pages. It's the first party I've ever attended where sitting down on a couch and reading was acceptable behavior. <laughs> issue three was launched this February. It is currently available to purchase at our great vendors, Cactus Records and the Country Bookshelf for $10. This year has 
been a better start than I ever could have imagined for the magazine. But we could not have done it without all of the artists, photographers, writers, editors, business owners, advertisers, and readers who came together to make it happen. As the magazine continues to grow, I'm excited to see the amount of people reading it and visiting the website continue to grow as well. I've realized that the things we create have very little meaning if we have nobody to share them with. The internet is arguably the greatest tool on earth. It offers an endless amount of information and knowledge to those who desire to find it. It is effectively leveling the playing field. Resources that were previously reserved for the privileged and wealthy are now becoming available to all tiers of our society. Internet connectivity is also steadily on the rise. As the number of participants in this global experiment grows, so does the amount of raw information available to each of us. For each new person that becomes connected to the internet, that is one more person that we have the opportunity to share with and to learn from. The combined power of all the sites and services online are endless. WordPress allows us to create free websites. Facebook and Twitter connect us socially. Kickstarter can fund our projects. YouTube, SoundCloud, and Flickr let us share our media with the world for free. Craigslist has replaced our classifieds and Wikipedia, our encyclopedias. Moving forward, I encourage everybody here to embrace the tools that have become so readily available to us. If you have an idea for something new, don't be afraid. There are resources available everywhere that can help you make it happen. You just have to be willing to learn. And just like Time Magazine said in 2006, you are now the creator. Thank you. <laughs>